Hey guys, welcome to Traditional Bull Hunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Sam Kovac, and today what we're going to do is we are going to refresh some of these arrows. As you can see, um, these feathers have just been beat up pretty bad. This arrow's passed through about four or five animals. It's been washed. Uh, the feathers are frayed. They've been in the rain. They've been through everything, but they are just, uh, they're wrecked. They're beat up. I actually took here, I have... Uh, what do I got? Uh, four or five of what was my worst ones. This one I just did here. I uh, already stripped off. But uh, we got five or five of my, my feathers that are just bugging me here that I want to redo. And we're going to reflex these arrows. Now, uh, it's similar but a little different than fletching a bare shaft that has nothing on there. But the process is the same with a few more steps in here. I'm going to show you easy ways to take it from this with your cap wraps on there and your feathers and all that kind of stuff and quickly and easily get it to a bare shaft so that it is ready to be fletched and then we are going to talk about the fletching process here so um, i have pretty much everything we need to do this and have it done here i'm going to go over the tools a little bit then we're going to get into process um, when it comes to removing your feathers we want to use um, simple a razor blade and I will show you how, but we are going to use a razor blade. Then, to remove the cap wrap, we are going to use a heat gun. Simple, easy. I used to do it with a torch before I learned about heat guns and using them, but this makes life very easy. I will show you how simple the process is. Then, when we have that done, we are then going to get into the fletching process. We are going to put on, again, fluorescent green wraps. We are going to cut a little section for white, which we do on all of ours there. Then we are going to actually use Sharpie markers on this spin right uh, arrow spinner to actually put uh, my, my lines on, whatever I end up doing. Usually I've just been doing black, but uh, we will put on there a simple kind of a crest. To do that with this stuff, we are going to chop our feathers with the feather chopper and uh, be able to get those ready for fletching. We have our hammer to hit the chopper with. We have our mouse pad right here, which we will use to roll on the new cap wraps and get them air bubble free. We have our bonding fletch type, which I still use. I've been using it for 30 years. It's never let me down. I've been very happy with it. Works really good. And then we have our insert glue if you wanted to. Now we already have inserts in all these, so we don't need to, but any of these insert, you know, these Gorilla Glues I've been using for many, many years, and they work excellent. The key is to get the blue bottle. Okay, with this one or that one with that blue stripe that says impact resistant. That is the key to the glues, the impact resistant factor. That is also a heat reversible um, setup. What you would do to remove your inserts out of here with that when you put that in is you would take a field tip, which I don't have here, but we'll take a field tip and uh, I, t I stick it in there just a turn or two and then I would use a torch and I would heat just that um, that field tip. I'd get that field tip super hot, um, get it good and hot and then use a pair of pliers to hold it and screw it all the way in and give it 30 seconds or so and let that heat dissipate into that insert and dissipate into the glue between the insert and shaft. And then grab it with the pliers and pull it and it comes right out gently just pull and give it a little twist and it'll come out if not you can pop the knock off drop a drill bit in there and give it a quick shake and the whole thing will pop right out for you uh, so very simple process to be able to do that but we're going to show you this stuff today there is a key element to this that is mandatory okay absolutely mandatory that is the rubbing alcohol. This is 70%, uh, 90%, I don't really care. But rubbing alcohol is the key to this whole process. Um, and you are going to use it everywhere. When we take that wrap off, we are going to use, and you'll see me, but we want rubbing alcohol and paper towel clean off the shaft. We are going to clean, before we put our wrap on, we are going to clean the base of our feather with it before we put that feather in a jig, which I didn't grab a fletching jig, um, but I'll pull one out here because we obviously got to use it. But we are going to clean the base of that feather. Uh, we would clean the, um, if this was a glue on insert, we would clean this whole entire thing like this before we would actually uh, have it ready to go. We would clean that. We would use a Q-tip and clean the inside of that broadhead and get that spotless. Look at the size of that. That is a prototype uh, that I got a couple years ago, uh, kind of a one-off, but that, or I think, I don't know if you might make them now, but a Boyer, that's a, that is a one and a half inch wide, three to one head. Look at the size of that beast. What it would take to be one and a half inches wide and three to one ratio. 
show. Just a massive broadhead. I love it, though. It's I, I won't hunt with it, but it's uh, a very cool broadhead to own. But you would use a Q-tip and clean the inside of that um, before you put your insert in. You would clean your insert. I use a custom double insert or even your standard insert would be cleaned with rubbing alcohol on a paper towel. The inside of the shafts would be cleaned with rubbing alcohol on a Q-tip. Rubbing alcohol is key to everything. So just something to think about. We're gonna go ahead and get this process started. I don't have an outlet that I can reach from here, so we're gonna go over there in the kitchen, and that is where we are going to strip the feathers and strip the cap wrap off real quick, and I will show you, we'll be right back. Okay, we have our heat gun here and plugged in and ready for when we are set to use it. We have our paper plate, which is serving as a garbage here for us to throw garbage in, and we have our razor blade right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a shaft like this, and what we want to first deal, do is peel the feathers off of there. So I'm going to take that. I start from the back. And you want to get in there to under that base and work that feather off. And make sure you get that base as good as you can. You don't want that base left on there. And you definitely don't want it on your wife's floor because she will get mad at you. So you're going to take that. We're going to, again, just work that, that razor blade here underneath that base as best you can and peel that off. We want to get that base. I'm going to show you that here on this one here. I'm going to come back over there to the camera closer. Like this. We want to make sure you get under that base. Okay, get as much of that base off of there as you can. And uh, don't be afraid if you cut through the cap wrap either. That doesn't make much of a difference. But we want to get that base quill off of there. And I will show it to you again. Like that. See how that is completely kind of removed out of there like that? We don't have that base on there anymore. That's what we want to do to all three feathers. So we take this one here too, same kind of thing. And we take that off, make sure you get, you know, all that white base. Again, another preview of that. Like that, off of there. So we pop that all off there, so that is now gone. So now we're clean as far as the feathers go on the actual shaft. It is no more feathers on it, cleaned off and simple. Now we're going to run right down through the whichever one's got the biggest line through it where you kind of worked your way through. We're going to take that razor blade at the back and we're going to cut through the cap wrap all the way down. We want to try to get a line through the cap wrap so that basically you can open it is what you're looking for. See how now we have a line that goes right down the center of that? That way it can be opened up and peeled off. It's not a tube anymore. Now it is, uh, you know, it's got a, a middle to it so we can peel it around. So now that we have that done and that is sealed all the way, we're going to take that heat gun. What we're going to do is just heat this. Got to let this get warm, give it a sec. When it does, I want to heat this up and, and soften that vinyl. I don't need to go too much and I don't want to get too crazy. We'll do the little white one down here first. We'll do that whole thing and hit it all. But basically we want it just warm enough to heat that vinyl that it's going to come off very easy. That's what we're after. So heating it up. Give it a second or two, a couple seconds here. Again, you don't want to heat the shaft, just the vinyl. Okay, let's set that down for a minute. Let's try that white one. Okay, see now if I come down here, I can now separate that white one and I can peel that. It's just peeling right off real easy. Comes off in one simple swipe like that. Set that over there in the junk pile. We'll go to the next one here. This one's coming too. Now you might get a little residue, that's all right too, but we're gonna work it on the side. Come around on this side. Kind of work it around here a little bit. Just like I'm doing here. So you can get to the back of it like that. Now, because we have that split, we can basically peel it almost all the way off. Okay, we lost that piece there. Must not have got it hot enough there. We'll come back to it. And we're gonna just keep peeling. Nope, see we lost it, it's starting to cool down. We're gonna reheat this. Because you don't want, it's better to be a little less hot and have to reheat it than to go too much and uh, then you end up heating the shaft. You don't again, they're carbon. They don't want it. You don't want to overheat that shaft and get it too hot to touch, and you know mess with the the um, structure of the shaft. But see now, when it's warm, this stuff just peels right off real easy. So we go back to our little spot here where we had it split, 
and we can just peel that right up and off just like this and just keep pulling it right there and it just comes right off boom there it is gone now so the wraps off there's a oh we got a little bit of residue right here you're going to find these couple little spots of residue on there uh, they just roll right off on your finger okay so they're real easy that shaft is not too hot to touch at all and I can take my hands like this and just get that little bit of stickiness to come right off like that and then it's gone. Now that shaft is completely clean and clear and anything we have left will be taken off with the rubbing alcohol on there. But so now we have a perfectly clean shaft. That's all there is to it. Simple, easy, nothing complicated about it and we took the feathers and the wrap are now off of them. We're going to go ahead and do these other uh, three arrows we got. Same exact process on here, same kind of deal. We're going to take an arrow, take one here that I can pull out easy. And we are going to strip it like that, strip it like this, strip it here. So easy to reflex these. And get that base off of there like that. Make sure that base is all off. And like that. Like that. And we're going to peel this one all the way top to bottom. Carefully, make sure you keep a good angle so you don't actually cut into the shafting itself. Good that side. There we go. So that's now splittable. Set that stuff down. Get those sticky things off. We're going to heat it. Peel that bottom one off, just like that. Get that little wrap one because it's just a little piece of white that I put on the bottom of it. Peel it off. Lost a little piece there. There we go, that's gone. We're going to reheat for the yellow. And get that, keep that good and warm. We already got it going, so it's already pretty warm. We're just going to heat it up again, just so we try and get it all in one shot here pretty easy. Cut that down. That edge, peel it around, that edge, start rolling it around, and get that piece to come with it. There we go. And we're basically just peeling it off of there. Like so. And we got this little bit left, it comes right off again, it rolls right along with your hand because it's still warm. Like that. your fingers your hand you'll pop the rest of it off anything that's left feel it make sure there's no glue specs no nothing that's going to actually hold up uh you know the uh you know that's going to cause that wrap to ripple or bubble um we got a little piece right there and that's that it's a chip in there some of these shafts are pretty old and they've been refletched many times and uh but there basically that's a chip but that's it right there like that and that is it. That's our process. So I'm going to go ahead and do these last two. Then we're going to move on to the next step of this. Okay. Now we have all those feather or all those shafts are completely done. They are ready. They are back to basically fletching arrows. Now, um, so that was a real easy process. I use a chopper. Okay. This is a chopper right here that I use for fletching or chopping my own feathers. Okay. Something simple, easy. Um, I modify mine down as low as I possibly can so that I get the highest back that I possibly can out of them. Um, so we're going to use this feather chopper. What we're going to do with this, we are using full length feathers. It is very important to me to get the biggest, thickest part of the quill. Okay, this base thickness that we're seeing on here, how thick that base is, 
is vital to me. The thicker the part, as you see, it goes to the bottom. It gets thinner. Down there, that base gets thinner. That's bad. We want the thickest part of this base on here. So sometimes we can get two feathers. Sometimes we can't. I'm going to show you the difference, though. Now, we're not going to chop all these in here because it'll drive my wife crazy with the noise. But we are going to chop a couple so we can do it for the demonstration purpose. Set it in there. I'm going to tap. It's going to come out. And we are going to get this weird little thing. That is, again, because I have, I have maxed out my chopper to get the highest level out of that thing we can. So there's that feather right there, which, again, this stuff is fine. That's all right. We're going to leave it that way. Now, with this one, I'm going to show you the difference here, what we're talking about. We'll put that where we can get the most out of it. Okay. So if we look at these, look at the back of the two of these feathers. Okay. The one on the left... Is acceptable the other one is not see how thin how thick this base is how thin that base is back there that one is unacceptable I will not take that feather and use it because it is too thin of a base I want that real thick white edge base that we're seeing on there is very important to me to have so uh, so in that particular this out of this particular feather I did not get two out of there that's considered usable so we're throwing that out of here. We're pulling all this out. This is all garbage. So that's not going to work. A lot of times I won't get two feathers out of one because of that same crap where that quill thins out, which is a shame they do it that way. I also don't want to have weird spots in there like this on that feather where this gap is. On here in the front, I do not want that hole that you're seeing there to actually, that messed up uh, feather section, to be part of the feather that I'm going to use. So we're going to put that on there, make sure that is not in my line where I'm going to hit. Make sure we are set here. Pop it on there, and out comes our feather. So we have our other feather right here. So now we have two good feathers. This one will not give yield me a third one. This one here probably will not either. It's not that, you know, it's only about 25% to do, but we're going to chop this one and see. Okay, and there it is. And give it a little pop. And we're good. Every once in a while, I'm, I'm doing this on the kitchen table, so I'm trying to not be too harsh here. Um, but, uh, so the same thing I showed you, that's okay. We're not worried about having that little extra wing on there. I'm going to show you how we fix that in a second. It, but like I said, it's because I have my chopper maxed out. Can we I almost get one out of that? Let's see here. Nope, I will not find that acceptable either. Because again, if you look at the quill thickness of the feathers I'm chopping versus the quill thickness of what would be left over, okay, this is unacceptable. I want that real thick base so I have all that area for glue to hold on, that thick, nice base. This, not bad down at this end, that would work, but it thins out too much towards the bottom and I won't use that. Um, so that's not good. You know, like I said, it's a shame they do that, um, that these feathers die out that quick. And it seems like they get worse and worse as the years go on. But now, so we got that little kicker wings on here. Doesn't matter, but you can see it on here. So let me slide this chair in so I got room here for you. But you can see those little kicker feathers? That's all right. It's just because I got that chopper set so high. What we're going to do is we're going to line these feathers up at the very back ends of them, okay? I want those all even back here at the end so they're at the same exact spot. Then we're going to hold them right here at the end. And I'll show you how we're going to clear that. We are going to use scissors. And what we are going to do is we are going to cut those right across there because what we want to do here, not only are we getting rid of these, which I don't care about here, but see how we have this sharp point on that quill? That sticks in people's, people's hands and it doesn't glue down very well. We want that gone. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all three of these feathers, we're going to line them up at the backs, at the back ends, so they're nice and even, like that. So we got them good and even. Then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to go right across here. I don't use a four inch, I'm a little shorter, so we're going to come right about here. And that's why I do three at a time. That way all three are even. And I like a little more kick in the front. I don't want it to taper all the way down. So now all three look like this. Okay, we have that perfect notches and flats going across, good bases. But if you look at them feathers though, 
we still have that flat section there and that's a corner point. We don't want that corner point on there. We want to get rid of that. So we're going to. So we're going to take those scissors and I'm going to just barely nip off that corner of that feather like this and let me show you the difference. Okay. The one on the right is the one I just trimmed. The one on the left is not yet trimmed. See how I just took that edge off? I took that little corner, just nipped that corner so it's not gonna, it's not an easy place for it to come up and there's no chance of it biting my finger or hitting on me or anything like that. So just a simple little process that we do to maximize all that we can out of those feathers and getting that set. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. Just nip that corner, a pair of scissors. And I'm gonna nip this one too. And we have those feathers now. I'm just going to show you these here as we got it, but you can see what I'm talking about right there. Just got rid of that little corner on them. So now they're not that harsh point anymore. So now these feathers are ready uh, for us to fletch with. Okay, so those are set and ready, and I do them in a three. So I make all three feathers together at one time. What that does is that doesn't, because I'm, I'm not using measuring tapes and all that stuff on where I cut it at. I know I'm pretty close, but it, this way I don't have one feather maybe a 16th longer than the other. So I work them in three. These three feathers will go on the same arrow. They will be just for that arrow. So it works out fantastic. So now we're done with this. We're done with this for right now. Like I said, we will, you know, obviously I'm not done. I got a lot to do, but I'm going to chop these outside on my workbench where I can wham, wham, where I can work right through them rather than doing it on the table. So now what we need to do is we are going to get our uh, cap, cap wrap ready. So we know that with this one, we're going to take this out of here and we are going to use our scissors. And I just kind of eyeball this because I just want a white ring to kind of go around it. So I'm going to just kind of look at it and go yay far and yay wide. Okay, so I'm just looking at it how wide I want it to be is this extra little white ring that I put on the bottom of them. But we got that set. We're going to open up our yellow ones. We're going to need a, one, a string of these here real quick. So we pull these out. Come on, let go. Stick into the paper. There we go. So we're setting those there. Set that off to the side. So now we have these ready. Our mouse pad to roll these on. We have our three feathers that are set right there. Now we need a piece of paper towel. Why? Because I told you rubbing alcohol on everything. This is non-negotiable. So we're going to take the rubbing alcohol here over a plate, obviously. Never somewhere where you're going to, you know, take the finish off of something but now we have rubbing alcohol on there i'm going to take each of these shafts and i'm going to clean them okay just like that that is now clean that one here gets clean even though we already dipped these and did all that stuff look at already look at the amount of dirt that we're getting off of there and oils and stuff like that so we're wiping these now if i was doing more than just these five i would probably start picking a different spot of this rag or get a new one after about five or six of these so there's that and then it's this one and just cleaning that off of there getting rid of that and then if we look at look at this towel what we thought was already clean okay so we're wiping those down so those are done and now again don't let that on your table or anything we are ready for our cap wrap so what we're going to do is set this here we're going to peel one of these off find a corner that's good catch it on a corner set that off the side try to not get your fingers on here too much using like more of your nail there we go now what we are going to do is we are going to roll this right on there make sure nothing is in your way that you're going to hit like that chair or anything's going to hit when you do this roll set it on there where you want it get it set and roll and that's all there is to it now we have a perfect wrap on there right there now we have to put the little white one on so I'm going to take this and I'm going to do the same kind of deal. I'm going to peel off that catch a corner of that little white one here, wherever I can. 
Come on. There we go. Let me get it from here. Okay. So now we have our white one. Same kind of deal. Carefully trying to not let it, you know, the less you touch it, the better. We're going to line that up. And we're going to roll it. And that's it. So now my cap wrap is completely on there. We have our white one here. And we have our yellow one on the back. Now before we fletch this, we will also reheat these with that rubbing alcohol. But now let's put our crest rings on there. So for that, what we're going to use is we're going to remove the mouse pad. And then we are going to use this spin tester right here, okay? Just an arrow spinner is all it is, but that's all I need to be able to hold that steady. Let me grab my uh, um, Sharpie marker. Okay, got my Sharpie. So we have this set. We know we want to roll this. And we're set right here like this. So all I'm going to do is take the Sharpie. I like to be at the edge of the table to hold it steady. We're going to put a ring right here. And we're going to spin it because I'm not real particular as far as how precise it is. Um, like that. We're going to put one at this end. And you can use paints or anything you want to. Okay, and then I'm going to put one in the, I'm not even going to put one in the middle. I actually like it like that. And that's how I've been making them actually a lot lately, but the ones in my quiver. So we're going to do that and just leave it that way. And that right there is our cresting. Now, if I want to put one in here, we'll do it on one just for the heck of it. These are practice arrows. So let's take it and put one more in there. If I wanted to put another ring in here, make it a little wider. That's all I got to do. Spin it. So that right there is my cresting. Is it simple, easy, functional? That's it. Right there. Works perfect. I'm spinning it around. I mean, nothing to it. Just done with this little simple spinner tester. So we have that set. Now the only thing we have left to do on here is to put our feathers on, which I will do shortly for you. I'm going to take the time to go ahead and finish this and get the rest of this uh, um, stuff done, Get make sure everything is all set, get the other shafts ready, and then we will fletch these up. So we'll be back with you real soon. Okay, so we got all the shafts crested. We have them all cap dipped, crested, ready to go. So we're setting them over there. And now we are going to use a jig here, your fletching jig. Mine is uh, about 30 years old, literally. I have four of these things. I have them set exactly like I want. And now what we are going to do, we are going to use our rubbing alcohol again. So we're going to take this, put just a dab on here, like this. We are going to take that and we are going to use that to wipe this cap wrap, okay? All we want to do is get the cap wrap where the fletching is going to go. So we have that wiped. Now, we do not touch that. We are going to fit it in a shaft or into the jig. <coughs> your jig has an indexer knock on there that tells you which way to go for your knock position. Now we are going to put our feather into our jig, line it up where we want it. I like to leave just a little gap in my jig. Every jig is different. A little bit of feather sticking out so when I press it, it sits firmly. But now we're going to take that same spot of, or a spot of that wet rubbing alcohol, wipe that base of that feather. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to just rub that off and make sure there's no fingerprints on there or anything from touching it. So now that is set. Now we're going to put our glue on there. Is this one open yet? No. So we're going to need to open that. Come on. Usually I can pop them with this. Not this time, so we're going to use our knife. And open that up so that now we are open. Okay, put our cap on here. And now we are going to run that bead of glue. If you're using flex tape, whatever you're using works fine for you, however your deal is. 
So you're going to put a bead right down that feather. Like so. Okay, and we're going to cap that, keep it from, uh, keep coming out and keep it from going bad. Somewhere on here, wherever I lost my razor blade. Let me see where I set that razor blade at. Okay, sorry, I wanted that razor blade handy in case I have to make any adjustments on this jig. These are old school kind of jigs. Slide it in the groove, make sure I'm set. We're then going to push it down onto the shaft and seat it fully. So it's on there and we are set. Now I also like to hold it up to the light, make sure that I am fully seated underneath that whole entire thing. And then we are gonna let up with light pressure. Again, they're old style jigs. We are set. Now if I needed to, I can take my razor blade that we just used and doll it out, okay, because we don't need it anymore, so I'll put it right on this field tip, and we're just going to doll it a little bit. So I'm just knocking that edge down on this steel, okay, there we go. So now we're dolled down. I can use this if I need to and get between there and press that feather down anywhere that I have to that I feel that feather could be not seated exactly like I want. Now this one's perfect and it's rare that that has to happen, but if it does, I could use this to press that down. But now we have our fletching in a jig. We have the arrow being made. We have everything set. We're gonna leave that. That's gonna take, I'm gonna leave that sit for 40 minutes, half hour, 40 minutes. I just kind of do them over time. So I'm gonna leave that sit here, kind of right on the end of this table here where my wife will be real happy with me for leaving it sit there for, uh, you know, till tomorrow when I get them all done. We have our other two feathers right here handy that go with that particular arrow. They do not go with any other arrows and we'd make them as we do them um, we're going to chop them all, but the final trimming that I showed you where we use the scissors, we will do those three feathers at a time for each arrow. And uh, that is basically our technique. That is our that, that is how we fletch and refletch arrows and get them all uh, basically remade and put them there together. But that is uh, that's the process. That's how you know how easy it is to take your old or your old arrows and rejuvenate them back to new, which I like doing. Now the cost of feathers makes it pretty ridiculous to do it on a regular basis. But when they get pretty beat up or they lost their luster and you don't you know they're not visually they don't work good for you anymore and you want new ones, this is it. It's a real simple process to take them from old back to new and it's just like fletching new ones with a couple extra steps in here. So hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. We'll be back with more stuff for you soon. Remember, rubbing alcohol. Okay, can't say that enough. That is the key. Clean and prep everything. Every single thing there is. Even inside your broadheads, even inside your shafts before inserts. Prep everything with rubbing alcohol. Q-tips, paper towel, makes life a lot easier. So, all right, thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.